questions 13 and 14 go together, so I'm going to work through both of them in the same video. Uh, first, quickly, for this sequence in question 13, this is one that we talked about in class. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. And you don't necessarily have to know its name, but the key here to find this next term is you're going to add the two previous terms. So in other words, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I need 6 more terms. 8 plus 13 is 21. 13 plus 21 is 34. 21 plus 34 is 55. 34 plus 55 is 89. 55 plus 89 is 130 plus 14, so 144. 89 plus 144 would be 144 plus 90, and subtract 1. So that's 234 plus 233. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, good. Now, let's talk about this next question. Of course, this sequence could go on forever. So, it says we're going to use this, uh, this notation Fn to be the nth term of the sequence. Or in other words, the first term, F1, is 1. And then the second term in the sequence, so that little index represents which position in the sequence we're talking about. So F2 is the second term in the sequence, which is 1. And F3 is the third term, which would be 2, and so forth. So, for instance, 233 would be F13, the 13th term in the sequence. Okay. And so, in general, we can call just any particular term in there Fn, the nth term. Using n just to mean that it can be any of these numbers. It could be the 13th or the 12th term or the 10th term or the 7th term. Okay, and in that case, f n plus one. So when, when you whichever term you pick, if you add one to the index, that's just going to give you the next term. So f n plus one represents the next consecutive term. Now, according to mathematicians, well, it's true. F n plus one divided by f n, or in other words, if you divide a term into the term after it. So, for instance, 144 divided by 89, uh, this number is going to approach something called the golden ratio. Okay, so we're going to use our calculator and the sequence that we generated to try and determine what the golden ratio is. So, we want to see what fn plus 1 over fn approaches. So, in other words, as we go further and further up the sequence, this ratio, this division that we do, is going to get us closer and closer to the so-called golden ratio. So let's try. So, for instance, the first, um, the first set I might try would be, say, the second term and the first term. So f of 2 divided by f of 1. The second term divided by the first term would be 1 divided by 1 which is 1, okay? Which is not that close to the golden ratio. But as we go further up, we're going to get closer. So the next one I try might be f of 3 divided by f of 2, for instance. So 2 divided by 1, which is 2. Then I might do f of 4 divided by f of 3. So the fourth term divided by the third term, which is 3 divided by 2 which is 1.5, okay? And so as I go higher and higher, this ratio should approach what we call the golden ratio. So let's see, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to jump to, this would be the 10th term, so dot, dot, dot. 
the tenth term divided by the ninth term. So 55 divided by 34. And that gives me calculator. One point six one eight. And I'm gonna carry this out to a few more decimal places. So one point six one seven six five. We'll go there. Okay. So I'm getting closer to this golden ratio. Now the next pair I might try is f of eleven divided by f of ten. So in other words, what if I try the eleventh term divided by the tenth term? That's eighty nine divided by fifty five. So 89 divided by 55 is 1.618818, and that 1 8 repeats. Okay, what about the 12th term divided by the 11th term? So in this case, that would be 144 divided by 189. Sorry, by 80. So 144 divided by 89, we can see it's 1.61798. We'll stop there. And now I can try the next pair of terms. So that would be the 13th term divided by the 12th term. So 233 divided by 144. So 233 divided by 144 equals 1.68, sorry, 1 1.618, 0, 6. So f of n plus 1 divided by f of n. We tried a bunch of examples and we're looking for a pattern here. And the pattern is uh, our ratio gets closer and closer to a particular decimal value. And we may not see exactly what that decimal value is. It's not an exact number. It's actually an irrational number, kind of like pi. It's a decimal that goes on forever without repeating. But you might say that we approach about 1.618. You can see we're going back and forth above and below 1.618. Okay. And it's actually a, the number just keeps on going from there. The decimal is never ending. And no matter how, mi how far up this sequence we go, we can get closer and closer to that number, but it'll never quite give us the exact number. We can only estimate it to a certain number of decimals. So here is the answer to this question. So what number does this ratio approach? Well, it approaches, and we just have to estimate 1.618. And we don't know what the rest of the decimals would be unless we add all day to keep trying bigger and bigger numbers. That's what computers are good at. 